In this video we will take a look at how to plot errors in nonlinear in plots with nonlinear scales. So um, we will uh, do this in a logarithmic plot um, and to see what problems there um, um, are involved. Let's let's uh, start with a regular linear linear plot. So we start with some um, let's say we have some measurements. We would like to plot. So our measurements are 9 plus minus 1, 3 plus minus 1, and 1 plus minus 1. Yeah. And um, we plot them on, a, li on a, a linear scale. So let's start, let's say here we have 10, 8, 7, 6, 5, and 0 is here. Okay, so plotting them, of course, let's first mark down the um, actual measurement values. So that's the 9 there, then the 3, and here we have the 1. And the errors, we have constant absolute errors. So we have here the confidence interval of plus minus 1. And the particular point here of the linear scale is that we have a... First of all, we have symmetric error bars, so the plus and the minus delta x have the same size in our plot and also on different positions in the plot, these delta x's remain of constant size. Okay, that's nice. Now, if we would like to plot our measurements in a logarithmic plot. Um, so let's do that. Let's again draw our... Let's start here with the, as a reference the linear scale. 9, 8, 7, 6, 7, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And here's the 0. So this helps us to actually map our linear values to the logarithmic values. So this is really very crudely done. Okay, so 10, 10, 10, and 3, 3, 2, 1, 1, is actually here because log 1 is 0, so the value 0 on a linear scale maps to the value 1 on the log scale. So 10 is 10. And then we have 2. Logarithmic of log of 2 is about 0 0.3. So that's 2. Log of 3 is about 0 0.5. And then it's very approximately like this. Here we have the 5. Okay. Now, plotting our data, then, means we have here the 9, which is then this value. We have our th number 3, which is this, and we have our number 1, which is here. Okay. That's straightforward, but now if we would like to indicate our confidence in the interval, so this is here, so this still looks somewhat symmetric because here our, our the, the, the non-linearity is not too apparent here on that part. But if we plot the errors on the, on the measurement 3, so 3 plus 1 is 4, that's here, 3 minus 1 is 2, so that goes down to here. And here now it becomes apparent that the error bars are not any not symmetric anymore it's even worse for the um, um, third measurement so value one this is the upper error bar and if we'd like not to draw now the lower error bar we have a problem because one minus one is zero and log of zero is not defined so this can't be drawn 
Okay, so what's the solution? Now, <coughs> if you think about it, drawing absolute error bars is actually drawing differences, sums or differences of x plus delta x and x minus delta x. But we are now on a log scale, so in the log domain, and differences in the log domain, yeah, for example, log x minus log y equals to x, the quotient of x over y in the um, linear domain. So that means um, differences in a locked um, a plot mean uh, have, a, have a different meaning. Of course. So mathematically, and on a linear scale, we me we measured we measured x and we plotted x. Yeah. On a linear scale. In the log scale, we measured x, but we didn't plot x, we plotted something else. Let's call it c, which is log of x. Now, if you want to draw errors or error bars, we shouldn't draw delta x, but we should draw. delta c or delta of log x. Okay, and what's that? Okay, if you look at the first derivative of log x, this can be written as d over dx, the natural logarithm of x over the natural logarithm of basis of the logarithm we started with, so that's 10. ln 10 is a constant, so we, that could, can, it can be pulled in front of the derivative, and the derivative of ln x is, so we have here 1 over ln 10 times the derivative, which is 1 over x. And then we can take this multiply it, our, our equation with um, dx, so uh, let's, let's uh, keep it in red, and we have the dx here. So that means we end up with d log x is 1 over ln 10 dx over x, and numerically, this is approximately 0 0.434 dx over x. And dx over x, this is the relative error, error which, apart from this, uh, constant prefactor is what we should plot as dc. Okay, going back to our our logarithmic plot, so let's put in the measurements again, so that makes it easier to compare, and in blue now we would like to draw um, our well, our error bars dc. Uh, that means we have to do some computations first, because we have to compute this 0 0.434 dx over x for each of our values. Okay, so we have 9, so x, delta x, um, delta x over x, and then 0 0.434 four three four delta x over x. So this table here this is one, this is one ninth, 
And that's then about 0 0.05. For 3 we have a relative error of one third, and that's 1.15, and here we have a 100% relative error, which gives us 0.43. So these are the numbers that we should use for our error bars. Okay, let's start with the largest value, so 0.05f is half a square size here, so that looks very similar. Then we have 1.5 square sizes for this value. So 1.5 is here. And then we have 0 point, uh, 4.3 square, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, something like this. And in the other direction, 2, 3, Okay. And now the DC error bars are again symmetric. They have a different size because the relative errors are different for the three measurements. And we don't have the problem of undefined um, confidence interval limits. So we can also draw here the um, full error bars for the lowest measurement. And so that means to summarize in logarithmic plots, um, use relative errors and plot log x plus minus 0.434 delta x over x.